on to Secrets 14 and another one of the Train Blue, the Tram Blue, um, this lovely restaurant in, in Paris. Uh, and I want to do it, use again the, the sponge roller and the um, brushes afterwards to give this lovely effect of light and atmosphere. And I think the garden's just coming out now into flower. The first catkins and uh, bluebells and daffodils and so on are coming out and the other plants are beginning to sprout up. So I hope it won't be long before I can leave the studio and get out there and be painting a few more things outside as well. We've had a long winter. Uh, the Brexit going on and leaving France and coming back here and then I've had my right kidney out which has been quite sore and really painful uh, then I find I've had stomach problems and just after that uh, I've now been confirmed I've got a, 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 a um, hernia in the groin and today and here I am uh, talking to you with Covid as well as I came down with Covid three days ago two or three days ago just getting over that fairly quickly fortunately but uh, I want to keep myself occupied and keep going so we'll have a go at this painting now and hope you enjoyed this one too. So we'll start with the one inch band roller again. And I want to start off with a thin layer of yellow ochre, which will take to a, a cooler colour by adding blues and greens into it, make them too bright. A little bit of pink into that, a little bit of magenta and, and uh, white, I think, as well. And we'll put fairly thin coats on it first, so we can still see the drawing underneath and uh, build this up. Some beautiful colours in this one. Paint it on that. And wherever these colours are at the moment, that's on the roller, we put them down. You can still see the drawing through, yeah? Which is handy because we can build up these loose effects um, and gradually tighten up on them as we go on. Got these lovely hues of these warms and cools into here. almost glazing up with it because I know I've got a lot of lights and darks to put into this. I want it it's not quite as green as the previous one. But it still will have a lot of green in it, be very subtle. Stretch right out to reach this. areas here. These creams and warm and cool creams as in lemon yellow being cooler than the yellow ochre and chrome. I've got to layer these up to get the effects of light that I want. as soon as I can to lose that show through anywhere. Get the texture of the roll and do some of the work as well. It's like watercolour, we have accidental, like controlled accidents going on here. And even this with the few colours we've got, we've already got the effect of this coming on. You can see the drawing is still showing through so I'm, I'm well able to Keeping control of where the shapes are. Yeah, we're going to move on to a blue grey now. Uh, a little bit of magenta cobalt and we touch together and make a, a lovely soft blue grey. And as I say, we'll use the textures of this roller to play a controlled accident into it to bring out those details of those textures more. Well, I want these to be white later, but I'm going to go over with the grey at the moment just to the base coat for this to this effect of light around his head as well. I say we're going to put white over this, some lighter colours over this a bit later on. More 
detail to do in the texturing afterwards, but they're just starting, just starting to work at these shapes. So I'm already doing undercoats if you like, I'm already doing underpainting or a ground. I'm using the roller on it to get the effects of light. The paint's quite thin on the canvas at the moment, so we build this up. Now adding cobalt blue to the mixtures. We're still working from our mid-tones down to our darks. Then we'll go back up to our lights in the end, of course. I mean, all this area is going to be coming up with whites later on, but I just want to get it covered at the moment. So we can bring the white over the top. I also bring out the other colours. Each, each colour enhances another colour next to it, so until we get all the colours on, you won't really know how it's going to work, not really. And then each colour will magnify the next. Right, I need to start going down to some of the darker colours now and I'm going to come back to my light. Down to the only deep Prussian blue now, which is a lovely colour. I might have to use a different roller too because this roller is getting a bit well used and after a while they start to get uh, a bit, bit spongy and flappy, floppy, flopsy. It's a good colour to use. It's dark but when we put the black on it will appear lighter. Just going to rub it over with a, with a light blue just to kill the brightness at the moment before I come back in with colours kind of over the top of that. Again the Prussian blue and then I'm going to move down to a black with it. I tend to use black in these cafe scenes. I don't use it much or I didn't used to in my um, figurative paintings but I am tending to use a bit more now. One of the things that stands out in this painting for me is this turquoise jersey of this chap here, which is lovely. I do want to make the most of it. But before I do that, I'm just going to add some black at last. I might put more on later, but I just want to get it established at the moment. I'd like. I'd like to have 
cut it a little bit sharper edge, but I can tie that up later by going around it, cutting it, cutting it around it, which is something we do quite a bit with this method because we're going over edges and it can't be as tight as we like. We're able to come back and put some pieces of these cutting up down here. Wherever there's a bit of strong black at the moment, I want to put it in. lights to go back in as we go on. We've only done the mediums down to the, the darks, we haven't done the lights yet. I'm just beginning to get the tones, the total values sorted. That's quite darks here. And that's black. I get some of my roller. Tones just beginning to work as we hope they would. Just beginning. We've got some space in it now. Well, what I'm going to do first is um, just put a little more warmth over. brush from it because I just want to glaze in this, this warmth here. I shall put it a lot more on later but just for the moment this is enough. I've got that very light turquoise blue to do next. I just want to, to feel this, this uh, warmth of these faces in the background here. Later, let's go for the green next then that we talked about. I want to get this lovely glaze of blue greens going on. I'm just going to knock it back a little bit with some of the blue grey. So I'm taking some <clears throat> emerald and sap green and uh, a little bit of grey just to soften it down a bit. For our mid mid green only one here. There's quite a lot of these. So many colours in something that you've really got to look for if you're going to do a painting like this. It's about colour, it's about atmosphere, it's about light, so it's very important that we find find them all. I'm going to bring his head up by going around it as much as within it. There's a lot going on in a painting like this. As you know when you first see it, you think, oh my god, how am I going to manage that? But hopefully just bit by bit by doing it this way we will. Indeed, manage it. And build it up and build it up until we get what we want. Some other colour from there. Bring that back in a minute. You can see I've lost it. Okay, these blue, blue greys. I just want to do this turquoise now. Get that in. Beautiful, beautiful turquoise here. Let's see what I can do with that. We'll take the pure turquoise for a minute. And a little bit of a, a more deep blue turquoise than that. And get that shadow part done here a bit more. So much reflected light going on, this ambient light that's uh, below and in between here. And even little marks like that can make such a difference to just pick out these colours and shapes. The sun's reflecting rather from outside now, and that's the job to see what to do. Oh, maybe I'll drop a bit up there a lot. I want to be able to see the canvas. I still have to go to work myself and not be put off, but equally I'd like you to be able to see what's going on. So what are you watching? I can pick up the details with the brushes afterwards. I just need to come in now with a few more lights and creams and pinks and things, I think. 
together that I just want to bring over very thinly to get back my effective life. So I've lost a little bit putting on those details and darks in. I'll come back now on them with these light creams and oranges. Around here. Going to make them a lot lighter around the lights later. But a lot of the work now can be done by brushes, so we've got in the main points, and it's quite possible that they don't need to do much more. They are gorgeous colours, if you can see. soon because the lights in I can again I can really see my colours a lot better. Which a mess that is. To repaint that completely I can see I had it without the light it's totally lost it into a blob now. So a lot of deeper greys than I've got. I, I don't know if to start going over with some more greens and, and deeper greys. Or whether the lights they're going to use will actually pull out these colours, which they might do. Well, I think I'll leave it at that and I'll come back in with my brush now. Well, it's a beautiful spring morning outside and I'm just getting over this Covid a bit more. Um, and I enjoy myself painting in the uh, conservatory still, with the hope that soon I'll be able to get out there and do some plein air. You know, in the meantime, what I want to do is come into here and work out where all of these lights are on here. I'm going to come down to my flat brushes now. <coughs> a quarter inch and a half inch should be enough. I'm going to start with the... I'm just going to put some very light cream on. So a little bit of lemon yellow and white just to give a background before I put the pure white on. Just to give a background of where these lights are. I can see some of my marks still underneath here, so I've got a good idea where the lights are going to go. And I want to still paint fairly loosely, as long as they're painting in the right shapes and places with the right colours, it should come out. And I can gradually build up these warms and cools in of this that uh, the hues. So a little bit of time taken here to just get these worked out properly. Let's come right down with that. I'm tempted actually to start adding some pink into it now a little bit and just make that a pinky. I might go over those again. Make that a, a very light pinky cream. Yes, I think I will. I want to get this feeling of this glow going on here. I might use some more. Um, pure cream later, but let's just get this worked out. Yes, it's a little bit complicated, not quite as I expected it to be. <coughs> Should have been too be that, it'd be boring if it was all the time. Let's go back to the, the original cream that I was putting on. Put the pink on in a minute again, and then the white on top of that. I would get this real beautiful effect of the, of the lights here. That should balance it about right. I'll take that pink again. I and we'll just reflect that around the outside a bit. I'll get this one worked out and show you why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'll put the lights on in a moment. The lights meaning the whites, not turning them on, but almost turning them on because in fact what we're doing here is painting the effect of light with colour and tone. Well now we start to get the atmosphere and the light because this is going to push these darker colours out more. Right down. And actually we've got to start into here at some stage. I'm going to use a little bit more water on the brush now and just 
glaze in the effects of this light here. are just beginning to form on it now, we can start to see the whole composition beginning to work a bit better. We've only got a colour on our brush, if it, if it exists somewhere else we need to paint that in. So the underpainting is allowing me to just hint these colours over the surface, which is rather lovely. But that's Part of the fun of painting like this is that we're pushing ourselves into new realms all the time and finding new stuff. More and more of this building up of these colours gradually picking out the shapes and the, the highlights. There's a lot of colours going on in here, there really is. It's going to take me a fair bit of time this painting, I think, because there is so much to do. colours and lights. And I had a gallery recently um, accuse my work of being slightly dated. I don't know, I, have, I would have thought this contemporary style, although the scenes might be slightly dated, but of course they still exist in fact, this, uh, this cafe is still in existence. But I mean many of the paintings I'm doing now are playing between the abstract and the figurative. I can't quite see how Especially as this particular gallery that, that made that comment, in due good faith, I'm sure, but especially as they have very traditional work in there and uh, quite standard landscapes and things as well. I, I find it quite surprising, but anyway, that was one of their comments. Uh, I take everything into account. And, uh, it's trying to find a gallery that. I'd like to get a gallery representing my work in England now. I, I've, I've had a lovely time in France, but I haven't been able to, to find representation over here. So if anybody in this country sees my films and knows a gallery that might wish to take my work on and represent me, that would be nice. I've approached a few, but most of them you don't even get a reply from. don't even get the courtesy of that. I haven't tried for a while. Tried one or two more recently. Well, I was waiting on this one that mentioned my work being a bit dated, um, because they, they they seem to be going to take to to to, 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 to take some to, to show them, and uh, they seem to be a bit more confident and a bit more open to doing so. But maybe I was wrong. So as I say, if anybody knows a gallery that. And they admire my work and think it would be suitable for that gallery, do, do let me know or have them approach me. Be grateful. And using the paint thinly and thickly now I can gradually build up these lovely effects of the, the arches. I don't want bit of a break for lunch I think. I haven't done much today but I'm still feeling a bit whacked after all this, which I don't suppose any of you are surprised about. The French love my work and I was doing very well there as you know but I've had to come back partly through health and this wretched Brexit that people were fooling into following uh, and it, it's messed my whole life up really because I was doing very very well there and my work was respected it was respected more in France than it is over here uh, because I suppose many of the scenes are very impressionist and I'm a very impressionist painter so it was nice to have that 
respect and feedback. Um, and I would like to try and get something, as I say, going a bit more here. Uh, but I cannot get the galleries interested. And the taste in art seems to be quite national, international, in that they change so much. I remember when I was painting in New Zealand years ago, they were very much into 1970s abstract or photorealism. It, it was the two. And I really wasn't to be in favour there either because of my impressionist ways. But it's easy to get downhearted as an artist. As you well know, you need your work appreciated. And I get a lot of that off off Facebook and YouTube. It's nice to have people liking the work and admiring it and, and finding pleasure, making nice comments and uh, boost my confidence and keeps me going. So I'm only using at the moment this um, white and thin layers of this white and lemon yellow just to, to map out and to mark out all these lovely textures and reflections going on way back here into the... It's all reflecting the light from these these main lights here you see and here so that's what I'm trying to build up here getting quite warm in here now actually I might have to open the window up get this drawing sorted out here and as I say it's about to start on having a look at these beautiful reflections. I was just trying to find that's what I was doing. I was just looking at this um, waiter here and uh, where things come gradually picking out the drawing, just pulling it out of, of the mist really, just, just bringing it, giving this impression of it. I just don't want it in, in great detail. I don't want to. Uh, spend my time painting every little mark, dotting I's and crossing T's and I can't be doing with that. This is just to get the feeling of it. So then you bought another colour in green which I don't really want to start using quite yet. I'm not quite ready for it. I'm still doing these light creams just still working things out. Now we've got that lovely golden pink I want to use it. It's going to be reflecting elsewhere as well. Now I've got some in already, but we've got a bit more yet to go in. It'll really make things start to sing as we put one colour against another. Because we've only been very basic with our colour so far. We haven't really been pushing the colours. It's almost time to start slapping in some whites because uh, you can really see the colours then and pull them out. Just need to get a bit more of this warmth into the background and between the colours at the moment. This is going to change on these again because I'm going to put some white in there and that totally change all those values there. Okay, I don't want to keep plonking colours on, I want to now put on those whites, so this is going to be the exciting time. Right, so let's go for pure white. Still got my quarter inch brush, I didn't go up to the half inch yet at all, and I want pure white now across these lovely lights to really bring out the, the whiteness of them and the colours around and make them really luminous and let the other undercolour just glow through. But they must be thick and they must be pure. I do want nice clean impasto paint up here. And then you see how delicate the other colours that seemed quite strong before, how delicate they now become. This white is going to be happening quite a lot throughout this painting. So I've got to bring it right round all of these windows and all over the place here. It will really make things gleam in between here. So we're going to put all of the whites in now and make all of these sparkles happen.
to soften some of these down again. Just get the effect of light first here. A lot of very careful painting to do with the white as well. Just to bring out all these beautiful highlights of light from the windows, which is the blue light, white light of this, and then the light from the artificial lighting, which is that lovely gold and pink light. Use the paint more transparently to blend it round here, a bit, a bit of water just to pull in because acrylics dry so quickly, you haven't got very long. Before they are dry, to do any blending. drawing to do with the with the blocks of colour. It isn't just painting by numbers, it isn't drawing and then filling in. It is drawing with the colour after we've done that to even bring it together then. So easy to make a mistake. I'm working too close up really at the moment. I should be standing right back and seeing what I'm doing. But I've got a little bit close up. And I've had several hours at it and I'm getting a bit tired as well. That's my excuse, what's yours? <sighs> Never mind the window, let's go back onto these lights again. to do all the time. Nice blocks of lovely heavy pasta white paint, clean, pure in this sort of a work. Other times I'll be playing with a lot of very light tones. I'm not using pure white at all or just for a sparkle at the very end perhaps. Because there can't be pure white in reality and there can't be pure black as the Impressionists themselves said. Everything is affected by light, and where there is light, there is colour, and the light will be colour. Sounds like something from the Bible, doesn't it? Let there be light. And then when I thought I was painting this just now, and I wasn't. So much white in this to do. To, to do. Um, it's quite a to do. there, white tablecloth, bring the light blue into there later a bit more. gone through various stages of light and now it's changed completely.
Nearly really there with the whites. I'm bound to have missed something, but I'm nowhere for a bit. Right, I think I've just about got the whites sorted. So I'm going to start looking at light blues and other colours, but I'm going to take a break now. That's it for a couple of hours. Okay, we're working off still with the brushwork. Not quite a bit to do yet. It's still a little bit too crude, a little nice and loose. I don't want to pull it together more yet. So just got to find our way back into this. Find a, a new direction in, in here now. Some of these whites have to be put back in again because they've they've come right back. It isn't just dark against light, rough against smooth, and warm against cool. Here now we've got more of the textures of, of the um, impasto over the uh, lovely sponge work and thinner painting. It's a very light, cool yellow now, but it, the process of lemon yellow will do for this. There's so many colours we need to work on playing one against another in here we haven't got yet. There's a bit more water on that one, just putting that lemon yellow into there a bit. You can see how it can play the <coughs> all against the cools. Now as I'm putting this cream in here. Now things can change. With just one colour can change everything, just widening it up and making all the warms come out or the cools come out or the roughs and the smooths show against each other. It's just lovely. The subtleties of uh, oranges and yellows that are happening. Now we've got to play the darker colours against these lights as well because we've gone quite light now with them. Change colours completely a minute and come down to this turquoise green here that I haven't finished off yet. I just want to look a wee bit at that too. See where that chair should be going there and what colours I should be getting here because I'm not really going to change something. As one colour changes next another one next to it, we have to be able to adapt to that. I keep seeing where the colours are coming, constantly, constantly looking. I'm using a mixture of sap green and uh, a little iridium at the moment. I have to link together into these areas back here. So when we might have thought it was finished, no it's not, it's just, it's just starting to get into it. Link so uh, painting together quite well through here, bringing that green through. And these darks will bring out the, the lights as we're playing the opposites rough, smooth, light, dark, warm, cool, gradually bringing out these lovely colours and tones. One against another, easy to get carried away. I was going to go out and take photographs, and I haven't managed to go yet, but. I will shortly, I think. I just want to get a bit more down here. It's starting to go a bit dry because I've had it open so long. I didn't know place to see. I need to play these different blues together. Some lovely hues of blues going on back here. I must go out soon because I need to go out and get these photographs whilst the sun's shining and it's so nice out there. Pure ultramarine I'm playing with now. Make these differences in these beautiful colours here. It's very useful to have all these different. Um, colours, and you, you do need them uh, to really make them work into here. I'll put some more darks back in here in a minute just to really bring out the vibrancy of these, these luscious different hues of blues at the minute. 
as you see when I was talking about trying to make colours sing, vibrate and sing. Yeah. I'm probably going to leave this a bit go do my photography now. Come back and have some lunch and uh, continue then. I a very, very light powder blue in now. So many colours I haven't even used yet that are here to find for here too. This area here, uh, easy just to get it right. There's a couple of marks you can make or break a painting like this. Just need to hint at it. Just hint at it. That's all. everything, one little bit of colour, even a little bit of green here or something else there, that's all it needs, we just got to get that right one. If it's the wrong one, then it totally throw you off as well, so equally it's as bad. A little bit of highlight here and there that just need picking up now, just little bits of light. And suddenly the paintings seem to just appear that we just keep working on them until you feel it's right. We hope that stage will eventually happen. Very light, very, very light green going on around some of these lights as well. Just to put the golds out a bit more. Almost there now, I think. Just these few colours that I need to find to really make things sing and work. I think that's about it, you know. Doesn't need to go much further than that. <coughs> I'm just wondering what to sign it on the right. I might use a very light cream. Let's see if you can see. Do have any tidying up to do anywhere? Or I think it's about there. <coughs> as far as I want to go with it anyway. I've got another painting in mind and plenty and now I want to go and paint some dust in the church. Sounds a bit tart daft, but we'll see. There we are then. Mm -hmm.